Uh, one of the most amazing moments uh, I had in class this year was with Yossi Leshem, who asked a question and before I had the opportunity to answer would tell me that he knows that I don't know the answer or he knows that I do know the answer but he was just trying to test me and what's amazing is he knows what everybody knows so what I might not know other people will know and he knows that they know and that I don't know and vice versa. Well, we had our, our first as a class Kabbalah Shabbat together on the Feinstein um, field uh, the Shabbat siren went off right before we started Bar Hu. We had just finished Kabbalah Shabbat, about to go into Ma'arid. And I just started crying, just this incredible sound, hearing the siren and being together in the group and going on the path that I'm going now. It, it's, it still sticks in my mind every time I hear any sort of siren, really, in this country. Um, the, the, the tears that we share during the Yom HaShoah siren, uh, the tears we will share in a few days for you know, Yom HaZikaron. And, it, 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 there's something about this connection to all the people that I get from that side. Just one night that was incredible was when we were on the Southern Teal and we were having the barbecue and it was just the whole group of us and the other schools and just this incredible night with all these incredible people and then the music around the bonfire and Nicole's kids with their marshmallows and I just remember thinking, like, I was just so happy to be there in that moment with these people and um, feeling honestly blessed. So, um, I, just one of those moments that made me think I wouldn't trade this year for anything. I think probably the biggest one, going along with that eye-opening idea, was at a point last semester when I realized that I was pretty much enjoying Excuse me. Going through the motions. And, I, and I ask myself, what the hell am I doing here if I'm just going through the motions? And that realization that it's not classwork, it's stuff that I actually want to learn, that I'm actually interested in. Having that realization changed my perspective and changed my outlook on everything that we're doing here, and I got re a lot more invested, and a lot more involved, and a lot more interested in what I was doing. And it made everything so much easier. It made all the extra work and all the extra curriculums and all that a lot more available and a lot more interesting because it was fun and it was something that I'd want to do on my own and I'm finally getting that, getting that opportunity. It's not that I have to do the work, it's that I want to do the work. And that made it a lot better. Hi holidays. Um, Yom Kippur, doing, um, being able to pray Kol Nidre for the first time with not only my wonderful classmates and colleagues and um, teachers, but also my mother and my grandmother sitting in the kahal watching the sunset over Jerusalem and praying Kol Nidre. I'll never have that feeling in that in this place again. I mean, obviously, I'll be doing Kol Nidre for the rest of my life. Um, but that was special. Well, a story about this year that I would like to share um, is going way back to our first Shabbat when we gathered up on the Feinstein lawn for Shabbat services. And it was my first Shabbat in this country. It was my first service of the year, I think. I don't remember, unfortunately. But what I do remember is that at this perfect moment when we finished Kabbalat Shabbat and began Mari for, uh, for Shabbat, the siren went off. And it was my first time hearing the siren in Jerusalem for Shabbat. And that moment just set up the rest of the year for me. I, I knew how many, sorry, I knew I was going to have wonderful and meaningful experiences from that point. And every Shabbat after that, I looked forward to the siren and very few of them actually reached the same moment of perfectness as that first one, but it was something to hold on to and to keep striving for every time that siren sounded. So I asked my mom to send me a pound of coffee uh, because coffee is scarce here and expensive. And so I got a care package from her um, at the beginning of the year. Uh, and when I opened it up, to my surprise, there was no pound of coffee. Instead, there was my childhood fox that I named Foxy Woxy when I was like five. Um, that has been in my room ever since. And when I opened it up, my friend Todd happened to see it. 
and he took off with it right away. And, uh, and it occurred to me that Todd and Foxy Woxy had kind of a relationship going on. And so we went to our first Tiul. I brought Foxy Woxy with us, with us as a joke, and, uh, and Todd took it and created a whole new persona from Foxy Woxy. Uh, and since then, we've now created a Facebook page for Foxy Woxy. I believe he has over 30 friends now. It is quite popular. Um, and it's kind of been come, become this, this persona of, of his own. And one in particular that, um, that jumps up is Right for Reform, um, something that I did in March. Seeing Israel in such an incredible way, in, uh, in a way that a lot of people don't get to see, see from seeing fish farms to kibbutzes that people don't know about, to uh, mango groves, to orange groves, is just really wonderful. And being with a group of people who are supporting progressive Judaism, as well as learning about the progressive Judaism that's happening in Israel, was very empowering. And um, I'll leave with just one quick story that actually happened yesterday that kind of is, explains my HUC experience. Um, I was sitting in Elish Leifer's class and he was talking about, um, we were talking about this, it's a history of Jewish music class, and uh, the class was, we were going an hour and 40 minutes at this point because sometimes we lose track of time, and I was sitting there and I did not want to leave because it was so fascinating, and I think none of us, none of the contorial students who were in the class wanted to leave because what we were learning was so incredible. I think the story I want to tell is on one of my first Shabbat Tots here. Um, I had lunch with someone who told me that Reformed Jews were the reason that the Holocaust happened. And one of the things that I learned how to do here in Israel was to have that conversation with that person when they were willing to have the conversation. And our relationship changed. And over time, uh, we ended up becoming relatively friendly. And he even invited me to his house for Shabbat. And when I asked him what I could bring, he asked me to bring a Divrei Torah. Um, and that was like a big moment for me. It really, I felt my impact here as a pro progressive Jew. Um, and I felt my impact here as a Jew in a positive and growth-filled way. And it was really an honor to do that. So uh, I guess a memorable story is that somehow I've become known in the class as being like really farty. I wonder how that happened. Um, apparently I was like sitting next to Ziggy at some event and he farted and he blamed it on me and it was in front of like Stephen Cohen and now everyone thinks I'm farty. And then there was this one time there was this Debbie Friedman Memorial concert and I was sitting next to Vlad and he farted and he started laughing and then I started laughing and next thing you know everyone's calling me Farty Daniel. And I, uh, I was out with Stick uh, walking through Meisharim and, and talking to different folks and uh, uh, there was like this old man who was like hunched over with this cane and he was like trying to take this corner and then he started lurching and um, all of a sudden this woman jumped out of the car and went over and like helped him to take the corner and like made sure he was okay and then she returned to her car and he was this uh, Haredi guy and um, she was like absolutely covered. She was a uh, uh, Muslim woman uh, in full coverage and uh, we kind of just watched this and I remember like looking at him make sure he was okay and I just looked over at her and I just she just gave me this huge smile and I thought this is like the narrative of Israel that just like does not get told and uh, I think I will hold that uh, both for like what's the hope and possibility here and uh, the need to bring people here to just like be in the streets uh, and be, be with the people. At the end of uh, Summer Ulpan, I was out sick one day, and I just got emails and calls and texts from so many people in the class who I didn't even know that well yet, and who I didn't even really consider close friends yet, and at that point I knew that this wasn't just a normal group of people. Um, it was a really special group, and they became some of my best friends, and I'm going to miss them. This year I had the opportunity to volunteer at the Merkaz Klita and Mivaser Tzion, volunteering for my Truma project. And I've worked with one family all year, and it's been a really rewarding experience. I've learned all sorts of sibui, learning how to tell the kids to bring me something, tavili. And it's really been incredible to see how different types of Jews practice their Judaism and what they learn and how they're learning Hebrew while I learn Hebrew. Um, and it's been a really awesome thing. And for Hanukkah, we actually got to take a Hanukkah party to them. So we made cookies, and we celebrated with them and taught them how to spin the dreidel. And it's been a really awesome year, and I really have enjoyed working at Mivaser
So an interesting story from this year uh, would be uh, my experience with the FSU for Pesach. Uh, their communities were so different from our communities here. Uh, we had, most notably, we had a Seder in Mogilov that took place in a dance club um, where the stripper pole had been removed from the Seder room. Uh, we left the Seder to find snow on the ground. Um, but despite all that craziness, it was really a meaningful experience and gave me insight and a connection to a wider sense of world Jewry. When, when I reflect on the year, one of my favorite memories that I have with our class is Thanksgiving. And I think it really encapsulates all that we are as a group. Just so much song and so much food and so much storytelling. And it's just such a happy and special memory that I'll carry with me for my entire life. And I hope all Thanksgiving is going to be as great as my year in Israel Thanksgiving. Who would have thought? Thanksgiving in Israel, the best time ever. A really cool story was when I went to spot with a few people from the program with Lynette and Stacy, and we were staying with in this bed and back breakfast that was run by somewhere on the Orthodox Haredi Spectrum family, and it came out that we were studying to be rabbis, and through the course of our conversations, the father and the family said, you guys have chosen to give your life to work for God, and that's beautiful. And to get that validation was, or not validation, but to hear that from somebody who maybe doesn't believe reform is valid was really awesome. It was when we were um, in Crimea for uh, the FSU project, the former Soviet Union project, um, and Vlad and Ali and I were in Crimea and we were really, really yearning to hear Hebrew because we didn't understand, well, Ali and I didn't understand anything that was being said. And uh, we were at uh, one of the palaces where the Yalta conference uh, was taking place and we ran into a Chabad family and we could not have been more excited to see tzitzit and black velvet kippahs and hearing Hebrew and it was just one of those amiyut moments where it didn't matter that we were reformed and walking around in jeans and they were Chabad and walking around in black pants and black velvet kippot and tzitzit but we all were able to have a conversation and really connect to each other. The most memorable experience, apart from walking this beautiful campus, would be Ride for Reformed. It was a, a five-day amazing experience riding through the beauty of Israel's geography with some great people, great friends, met some amazing people, and contributed to a, a great cause. Uh, as soon as we got back from that trip, it was, we had a new lease on life. Everything was so much more beautiful and positive, and we learned to appreciate life in a way that um, I never had before. Working on the Purim Spiel this year, um, Book of Purim, was one of the best experiences and so much fun and it was wonderful for me to get to bring my uh, own background uh, into our school life in a completely different way and I'm still excited that people are still watching it and it's been an amazing year and I love everyone so much. I'm really going to miss um, all of our Havdalot and Sudash Lishit together uh, because our class's favorite thing to do together is eat and make music and it just won't feel the same next year when we're all apart. Uh, an interesting story, um, the other day I was Skyping with my son, and 13 years old, and he said, Dad, what happened to your hair? And I said, it's as long as yours. And he said, cool, great conversation to have with your 13-year-old son. I'd say the biggest uh, Israeli moment that I had this year was on our cruise uh, to Greece over Sukkot, where not only was there a sukkah on the top of the boat, but we celebrated Simcha Torah um, in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and they proceeded to take out a Torah and parade it around the entire cruise ship uh, followed by the longest conga line of Russians and Jews <laughs> that I have ever seen. Something that I really remember from this year, um, so many memories stand out, but I have to say last week when we did this um, amazing program for the families from Mivaseret, and it was all the volunteers from Mivaseret, and other people from this class came to help, and it was just amazing, but I can think about Tulim, I can think about the way you supported each other in Tfilot, I can think about um, Ride for Reform and FSU Project and the Purim video and a million other things. Um, it's just been an incredible pleasure and honor to be with you all 